And also she doesn't ask for referrals. So a lot of us are on the first call. Oh, if you don't want to buy or sell, do you know anybody who might? So if anyone could just go out of their way to build a database big enough, you could expect about 1% of referrals every single year. So I write out my entire emails for the year before the year starts. I send them how to build wealth, how to invest, strategies, things to go out of their way to make them financially free, things that anyone, regardless of what part of the actual buying or selling process they're at, are gonna interest them. The thing is, is how I talked to them that first time made them feel like, wow, well, a community outreach. You should think of yourself as a volunteer worker doing community outreach to get to know people, see what you can do to help them using your services as a real estate agent. The problem is we think every prospect needs to be a deal today. How do I handle this objection and turn this into a contract? And that's why my business is so large because I don't worry about the stuff that doesn't matter. You think their mother dying matters, you need to remember forever. No, you don't. Simple and scalable. You wanna keep everything simple where you go to bed every night thinking, ah, you know, uh, my, bi my business is growing and I don't have to worry about anything. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Talk to us about your system. What, do you use a CRM? Do you, I know I saw some of your stuff that you do top buys and you can do like a lot of, listen, you can think about us hours of the old thing very different. So they don't have resonating. If what Ricky's doing, they not resonate. You're like, oh my gosh, like never, none, forget. Leave that. <laughs> and it is, it's not going to be it. Ola has a very different style. Why don't you talk a little bit about what you do? Yes, the mind is probably going to be a little bit opposite, but I do what's good. You know, simplified. Yeah. So my hands are you know, going to get moth on the weeds. So uh, I do believe follow up is super important. And so from the time like our clients are under contract, we offer them, you know, moving boxes. And then we, my assistant will order them boxes, tape, bubble wrap, markers. Um, and just little things, I feel like it's the little thing that really stand out to the customer. And it's time you do anything that's above and beyond, that's creating a wow and steering ones from that. And so after closing my database, my uh, assistant puts them into Google Maps. And so it drops a pin. And so if I fill up my Google map, I need to see where all my customers are. And then and if I'm just out. Wait a minute, what? You know where all your customers are? That's pretty cool. Ha oh, 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 they're, they're the homes that they bought. Okay, okay. Okay, hold on, wait, okay. I thought you were like, you're, you're thinking like Snapchat tracking. Like, I thought you were like, GPS is on. Like, there are, there are no Charlies. Like, they're heading to pick the kids out. Like, I'm like, wait a minute, dude. I am not doing business with you. Shit. That's, that's some relationship building right there. <laughs> no, so if I happen to have some pre cut and I had some pop buys in the car, then I could easily just drop by, drop something off, and I keep this simple. I don't, like, call. Some people say, do you call and make an appointment? No, because I don't have time for that. So to be honest, it's easier for me if they're not home because then I took a selfie of my phone at the front door. And then send them a picture, leave it on their door, and they'll, hey, I came by and dropped them off a little photo. Mm. I never have to ask, uh, you know, the awkward, do you have any friends that are looking to buy and stuff? I don't have to do that because in the follow up, mm. they just they naturally start the conversation, go, hey, how are your kids doing? Blah, blah, blah. My neighbor wants to sell their home. Can you help? Um, and then we do two client appreciation about a year. We do um, in the summer, we do, you know, when the cool is it? Yeah. But we'll do like a baseball day, quite the climb, and yeah. cross up, drink, watch a game. And it's nice because they're there to watch a baseball game. So I, my husband, and it's my husband in the front row here. Uh, Give it up for him. Uh, uh, so it's nice at the baseball game because there's something to do. So I don't feel like all the pressure is like they're all standing there waiting to talk to me. Um, and then in the fall, we'll do, we'll give out fatty skinny pies and we call it pie and ice cream because we do it at an ice cream shop. So they come, they get free ice cream, pick up a pie and we get to chit chat. And so just between that, they feel like we are staying in touch from their mind. Awesome. That, that was great. W w but Louis <laughs> magnify what she was saying here though. One thing I picked up was that when she knocks on the door, she hopes they're not there. Right? And also she doesn't ask for referrals. So a lot of us are on the first call. Oh, if you don't want to buy or sell, do you know anybody who might? Well, they don't know you. 
Are they going to really refer their family to somebody? They don't even know what your service is until you've done a deal with them or proven to them some way that, that you can give great service. You haven't earned the right to ask for a referral, right? That's two things I picked up. This is so good. Like, this is like so much value. This is a master class. I, I got something good, okay? So if Ricky's all about scaling and Paul is all about love, I'm right in the middle scaling with love. And this is how I do, okay? So when I met Ricky, so, so this is, when I met Ricky, I saw he had this system in place and he had 10,000 people in his constant contact every single week. To this day, you get an email every Wednesday from Ricky telling you the local market stats, what to do, all of that stuff. I said, all right, this is really interesting. Ricky, how many deals are you closing every single year? And he told me 100. And then I was like, 100? That's like exactly 1% of your entire database. And that's how I came up with the 1% rule. So I said, okay, so if anyone could just go out of their way to build a database big enough, you could expect about 1% of referrals every single year. Cool. How do we double that from 1% to 2%? And that's where the love factor comes in. So essentially, there's three different channels that I use when it comes to systems for nurturing. There's emails, and I don't write them out weekly because honestly, Ricky literally writes them from scratch. And I love that. I just don't have the time. So I write out my entire emails for the year before the year starts. It's 12 monthly campaigns. They go out once every single month. And as soon as someone subscribes to my actual email, not everyone's getting the same email. That email starts 30 days after they subscribe to my campaign. So now not everyone feels like they're getting the same email every single, single week. So what yeah. But he used emails to know, well, on said boss was happening. If it didn't ever got to look. Ricky does. Yes. Right here and now. So once again, everyone is sending out the, here's the pumpkin pie recipe, here's when to paint your walls when you're selling. I'm aware that 99% of people, when they are in a position to buy or sell, are going to call someone that they trust. But most of the time when you meet a random stranger, they're not ready to buy or sell. So all the emails I'm sending them out on are not educating them on the buying process. That's like your dentist sending you an email every single week about a root canal. You don't care about the root canal until you actually need one. I send them how to build wealth, how to invest, strategies, things to go out of their way to make them financially free, things that anyone, regardless of what part of the actual buying or selling process they're at, are gonna interest them. Then comes the second channel, which is text messages. I send out six text messages a year on strategic holidays. I send them out on St. Patrick's Day, on 4th of July, on Labor Day, national holidays that everyone's about. And then the last one is voicemail blasts. Voicemail blasts go out twice a year. When you combine all three of those, you have a really good nurturing system for cold leads that you don't have a relationship with. But then back to what Ricky and Paula were saying, the second you close a transaction with that, or they send you a referral, they get bumped up to VIP list. At VIP, there's three things I remember. The day they sent me a referral, that's our unofficial anniversary, or the day we close on the transaction, that's our official anniversary, their birthday and their half birthday. And if you send them a physical gift, not you sitting there and going to Target and buying them something nice and delivering at them, I love that you did, <laughs> but you actually getting a gifting service that automatically does this for you, now you have an entire system to take cold leads, into warm, hot referrals, and then those referrals get a higher level of love from you. And what's the truth about being using to keep trying to be able to I built my own CRM because KV Core, even though I have 15,000 people on there, required third-party integrations through Zapier to automate this entire process. So we had to go in there and do our own technology. And then, and so on. Long stuff going on yet. You guys, are you getting value from this sound? That's pretty amazing. Um, I, what I do, I used to respond if you line up my face injury, so I, I don't know how the way this is in. And I create a bit to it's doing, I have them come to me. So a lot of the people want us to give you back, right? And they're the only how to do that. So what we do is see if we get every month, because I'm a new still, it was also just from the point in office. We bring in the duties tasks. The very simple as two. I don't want to go out there and I get my company's doors. I'm tiny going to end the box, to be honest. So. If it's not, I like crack me in front of people. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but so we have to be, what we do is we send about um, emails to the data, just collect them, information before they come into the Facebook group. And so then we build our CRM, we use Ribbity, and we send them a wealth of email. And then they tell them about everything that's happening. So we use MailChimp for what we send them stuff. But I'm going to start doing this, and then I can meet you further, which is amazing. It's an introvert's dream. <laughs> um, what else? Tell, Tell us a little bit about. about uh, do you do any client events? No. no. Absolutely not. <laughs> Here, here's the thing. Like, 
I, I, I wanted to build a business that was very residual. I, I didn't do this so I could work harder. I wanted to build a residual business. My vision was that if I create deep relationships, right? It, let, let, me, let me clarify, because a lot of you are probably like, well, all you do is send an email to everybody. How is that building a relationship? The thing is, is how I talked to them that first time made them feel like, wow, because of my tone. Why? Because I talked to them like they're my father, my mother, my best friend from high school, my cousin, my wife. I'm talking to them like they are family, because they are, right? You, you guys understand, okay, how many humans have ever been on the planet and will be in history, right? Think about the, the chances, the probability that a human being lives at the same time that you do in the same area that you do. What are the chances? Nothing? Nothing? You don't understand how, how much of a family you really are with people in your market and how close you really are. People think, like, if you were on a, a, a train ride in London and you saw somebody across the aisle that was a mean mug and you're like, man, that's a mean person. Something happens three hours in, they drop something or whatever, you get into a conversation and you start talking and, and, and suddenly you find out you're from Miami and they say they're from Miami. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, and you feel comfortable with this person all of a sudden, right? It's the same thing. What, being from, if you saw <laughs> somebody on Lars and they're from China, and you talk to them, and they're like, I'm from Earth. They're like, oh, you're from Earth? Oh, I'm from Earth. We're from Earth. Right? We are connected. We're like best friends now, even though you're from China. China. Right? You got to understand that the, that the bond is so close. That's why I don't like the word cold calling, because you're calling your friends. In fact, you're calling your neighbors. You're calling your, and you're just full of community outreach. You should think of yourself as a volunteer worker doing community outreach to get to know people, see what you can do to help them using your services as a real estate agent. Think of yourself as a volunteer worker. The problem is we think every prospect needs to be a deal today. How do I handle this objection and turn this into a contract? 90% of the prospects don't wanna do business right now, but we're throwing those 90% of those people we talk to, we're throwing that relationship away by trying to close them. Why not say, listen and say, oh, you wanna do something in two years, great. Do you have an agent you're going to work with at that time? I'd love to work with you. Let's stay in touch. What's a good email? What's your cell phone? Let's stay in touch. You need something? Let me know. I'm here. I got you. That's the way that you should be approaching everyone, not caring if they buy or sell a property or not. That's not, that's not the objective. The objective is market share. What's market share? Anybody? The amount of real relationships you have with properties on the market, not how many deals you got. Now, how many listings you have compared to everybody else? That didn't mean nothing. I'll take the guy that's doing 10 deals and 4,000 relationships over the guy that's closing 100 deals with no relationships because they don't keep, they don't stay in touch with anyone after the deal. I know this guy is going to crush that guy in the next coming years and then would go way over him. I don't even know where I was going with this. <laughs> what? Like when you get people. <laughs> That you build these relationships, and then you just stay top of mind by sending the email, yep. right? Like that's perfect. I yep. That. Um, because, you know, I think most of you think about the client and the nation, the client is thinking about me, because they're thinking about the pieces instead of thinking about, okay, yeah, for you once and next. Yeah. So when your phone calls come in, are you asking? Yes. 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 Like, guys. Think speed, speed, speed until you're talking to a prospect or client. And then think quality. The world stops. I could talk to a prospect for three hours. I don't care. When I'm in front of them, that's the only thing that matters is that client. And whatever they're talking about, whatever they want to do or, or, or speak about. But in between that, I'm thinking speed, speed, speed. But if somebody calls me, the world stops. Hello, what, how you doing? How's the fam? What can I do to help you? Staying very present. Yes. Like. You're staying present in the relationship in the moment, and then you want the next one to stay present with them, and you're not focused on those details, the noise outside of that. And I think that's what's thinking what you're nearly so successful. People will see when they speak to you. They yeah. Exactly. 
Talk to us about moving to a new area, starting your business all over again. How did you start nurturing those relationships? Uh, okay, so initially, when I was, I have, I have twins, who I took three years off, my time's How old are they? Oh my gosh. I'm glad. Wow. And so uh, when I went back to work, I was also following through a divorce. And so it just a lot of change. So I'm in a new city, going for divorce. Now I'm going to have the responsibility of feeding my children. And so, like I said, I work for a company and uh, at the time, need to buy cheap houses with those hence full, like 45 cows and dollars. But to me, I was like, so the other agents, they're like, boo, I'd want that cheap lead. That's something I was like, I'll see it. Because that's a $900 check I could feed my children with. So we just started like that. And because I was going back to work in the city, I had time. And so Beach Up Like Had Fun, I had to go to lunch, coffee with my clients, and just really got to know them. Um, like Rippy said, I love to be private. So I have some complaints I don't answer my clients. And it's because if I'm present with somebody, I'm present. But then there are really it is. Like, so for a second, it's like, I don't care what else is going on. It's not a good excuse to do it. I stand up short. And that's not in it. And so you have to accept all of like a man showing time. <laughs> um, so that was it. So I really tried to send time. And I, and when I look back and I see, okay, which client have I got lots of referrals from? A lot of times it was the one that had time to go to coffee with or I had the lunch with or where they invited me over. And, uh, and you know, you've ended up becoming friends with a lot of your clients. But I mean, stick that, setting that quality from seven. Did you, I'm going to have to ask Paul, um, did you, when you started in real estate, you sold houses, right? How long were you actually selling houses that will you realize there was something to do not treat them anymore on a large scale? And how did you? I would say it was about two years because from 2016 to 2018, I hustled, I bustled, I door knocked, I cold called, I went to networking events, I met with business owners, I did the coffee thing, I met with mortgage lenders. I did the grind. And then when I got to 2020, I had tons of referrals coming in, but then once those referrals came in, it was almost like it was so much easier to get more referrals from the people that already trusted me. And that's when I started kind of nurturing or investing into the prior relationships I already had. So I would say it took me about two years to understand that um, it's going to take hard work and grind to build up your database to get it to three, four, 500, 600 people. But once you're at that point where you've closed 10, 15, 20, 30 deals, at that point, it's actually a better ROI to invest into your past clients than to continue going out there and just nurturing cold leads. Um, so I always say- that After you invest in your house's land, what do you- The VIP list. That's when I bumped them up and then that's when I started taking out people for dinner on their birthdays. I started sending them gifts. Um, I started going out of my way to remember anniversaries. Just kind of having uh, those little special moments in their life that their family members and their cousins, their friends forget about. If you remember that as their realtor, it's like done game. Like they're gonna send you business. Uh, a team that that kind of implements all of that stuff and sends to a lot. I know you talked about having a system that sends out people automatically. We, we used to hire staff, virtual assistants, or my admin would go out there and, and actually do the follow-up, the birthdays, the gifts, all of that stuff. And then we started finding gifting services that would do this on a much higher level. So I think in the beginning, if you could find technology to do it for you, it's way more cost effective. But at some point, there are some things that technology just can't automate. And that personal touch of having a human being reach out to them and be like, Hey, this is Kayla's assistant. Uh, I was just reaching on behalf of Kayla, just letting you know, uh, we love you and appreciate you. Happy birthday from the Gold Bar team or whatever it may be. And that's how everything kind of came to be. And I think a lot of people, sometimes they get afraid to invest before they see something coming in. And that's one thing that I'm hearing for all of you is they get to spend the money before the money comes back. Yeah, so let's say you build up your VIP list to 100 people. It takes you about five years to successfully close 100 transactions or get 100 referrals from your VIP partners. Uh, if you're investing around $75, $100 a year over the course of three gifts on every single person, you're spending between $7,500 to $10,000 a year on this VIP list for no apparent reason. It's just through genuine affection, showing them love, showing them you actually care about them and you're thinking about them. In order for you to go out there and spend $10,000 and not get a return on that, it is a very hard thing to do. However, we look at how much we're spending in Zillow, uh, Op City, um, all these uh, realtor.com leads, Facebook ads, we're spending tens of thousands of dollars without even, blinking. without even blinking. And then how often do we get an ROI from Zillow? 95% of the people we speak to aren't ready to buy or sell anyway. So why not invest that into the people that actually do know us, love us, 
and have gotten results from us. I think it's just a much better ROI. Perspective on like where you want to spend your money, invest your money. It's yep. not even spending, it's investing. Correct. And looking at it like that. So really amazing information. I want to bring it up to these guys and see there any swag things that you might have. Yes. And will you guys talk about how you time block your days and like how you get your days started and all that stuff? So the question is, if we can talk about how long my logs and then they start. <clears throat> um, so I get up at five o'clock every day and go to the gym, all that good stuff, right? And then as far as work goes, so at eight o'clock, I'm going to sit down and organize my day. So I use a legal bag. So I'm going to make all my, uh, like, I'm going to, I'm going to go through all my emails, all my text messages, a uh, lot yesterday's legal pad sheet. Right. And I'm going to create a roadmap for the day every day. So that when I get through with that, it takes 10 minutes or so. I don't have to think throughout the day. I know exactly where I got to be when I got to be there. If I have a, a meeting or a zoom or a listening appointment, or if I want to make calls here, or do my weekly email, do make some videos, whatever I'm going to do, I map it all out right there at the beginning of the day kind of block everything out, no distractions, and really map out my day, put it all right there. So I have a list of my to-do stuff. I have my schedule right there, um, any you know hot leads, anything that I'm working on, it's all right there. The, this is for a real estate agent, right? The next thing that I would do every day, this would be about 8.15, look at the MLS hot sheet and look at everything, every new listing, every expired close, pending, everything. And just scan through there. See if anything jumps out at me that I want to dig deeper into. This will make you a market expert within just a couple of weeks. You'll understand the market from the core. And also you'll see properties pop up or go under contract or close that spark, um, spark you to want to reach out to a client. Oh, I sold something in there to a client. I'm going to call and see if they saw this, see how they're doing. Somebody may not have talked to in a while. Maybe you have a buyer that's looking for that specific thing. Hey, I just saw this come on the market. Did you see it? You know, let's go take a look. So not only does it make you a market expert, but it also sparks activity, business activity. Very should know that in all of your analysts, say a hot seat and don't know the hot seat is, and it tells me the past 24 hours, everything is happening in the room. So it's what do you think about us? Every day. If you don't do that, highly recommend it. And so like when you see a new listing pop up and you're watching the hot sheet, then a, a week later, you see that same property go under contract. You're like... You're becoming a market expert and you start spitting out information. You'll be at a showing, a, you'll be showing a house and they don't really like it. And they'll start talking about this other neighborhood and you'll just start spitting out, oh, well, this came on the market in there and that and this, and this one just sold. This one's priced about right. Probably not going to last too long because you saw it come up in the go under contract. The last one, it's like you, you, you're able to advise your clients better. You're able, you just, you just become a market expert with that one little 15 minutes a day. At 8.30, I'm going to figure out who am I calling today? Because I don't care if you get your leads online or pop buys or social media, Zillow, whatever. You got to call them. Either somebody in your team's calling them or you're calling them. Somebody's having a conversation with somebody or nothing's happening. For me, I'm going to skip all that time, money, and energy and just call my fellow family members that live in my community and see what I can do to help them. Um, I'm just going to pick out a subdivision and call them, right? Because if I do a, if I do a YouTube video, I'm hoping that a property owner calls me or reaches out, which will probably happen. But why would I do that and hope and wait for that to happen when I could just get the number for a penny and just call them right now and see what I could do to help them? I'm a get it done kind of person. So from 9, 8.30, I'm figuring out who I'm going to call. I'm figuring out exactly what I'm saying, doing my research. So at 9 o'clock, I'm dialing. 9 to 12, I'm on the phone back to back to back. After lunch, do whatever you want to do. Marketing, right? Make videos, do your weekly email, write your blogs, do your SEO, do your handwritten letters, your direct mail, whatever you want to do, really, because at that point, it's kind of bonus. Stay busy and kind of have whatever your favorite marketing to activity is. I would say make videos, but not everybody's a video person, but whatever it is. And don't think social media is just videos. You can, it can be written word. It can be images. There's so many different avenues there to capitalize on social media. Maybe I'm really confused. So you don't... Property owners that, that own the exact property. See, I could spend 200, 300, 25% on Zillow leads to get a random person in my market. Or for a penny, I can pick out the house I want to represent and just call that owner right now and say, hey, I'm Ricky. That's my script.
hey, I'm Ricky, right? How are you today, right? How are you today? I, I'm right down the road from you. Did you know we're neighbors? Cool, right? I didn't know if you saw this house sell. It was right down the road from you. I was just calling to see if there's something I could do to help you today. No? Cool. Is there an agent you would work with if you were to do something down the road? No? Great. Well, listen, I'm sure you'll do something at some point. I'd love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. It'll be all right if I just stay in touch. Cool. What's a good email? Is this your cell now, buddy? <laughs> What's that? I said, and were you on a subway in London? Exactly. Exactly. I think I saw you on a train somewhere. You know about that. What's your life? What's your life? I look up. I have kind of dread, so I said, so yeah. I involve uh, balance and mental health, and I feel like as realtors, we tend to work so much that I've really tried in past couple of years to have more balance, and it's just for me, working fun Steve like, search the morning, just, and it's possible, I get play pickleball, and I love it, and, um, and it's very therapeutic, that I have fun, and I get a workout. And so it would yesterday one thing out. He said, Oh, I could go to um, you know, one X Tank or I could go to like Nickelball. And I chose to go off and then like the other. So uh so I don't have a structured schedule, but I tried balance and I've gone my seven to year old days to my name. Well not I should graduate, but so I want to have quality family time, you know, and so balance is where it's to be. So I want to have a little fun, then the time and I figure, you know, um, I'm on it as little as possible for work. You know, I try to simplify things, do as little as possible so that I can have some fun time with the family and go play kickball. This is such a running theme on this panel. It's like, A, insistence is about making sure that you have a balanced life, right? It's taking away all those little things that in terms of fully focus on and focusing on your life, right, and making sure they can do the things that you love to do because that's where you came into it's a realist thing. Most of us, it's the logic that involves that, that we're racist. And so many of us take it the wrong way, go diet, work our butts up, and then, you know, a kid is sitting and like tugging on us and we're just like stuck, like, yeah, I'm on the floor, right? How many of us use that? So this is really validating for the like, people to see, for people in the audience to see that. You don't have to hustle them up. You can do things. Now I know why you asked the question, because I'm, I'm thinking through here and her answer and I'm realizing that, see, we all got in the business for freedom, to be our own boss and make our own money and uh, set our own schedule and do our own thing, right? Right. Not great, right? It's because we let our businesses control us. And so every little call that comes in, we feel like we have to answer right then. Okay, so I want, to, I want to put you in the mindset if you're showing a property. If you're showing a house, you're with a client, okay, and one of, those phone, one of those calls come in that you normally would answer, you know, even though it probably doesn't matter, right? Like uh, it, uh, inspection repair dentals, let's just say. All right, somebody's trying to call to negotiate uh, inspections on one of your listings and they represent the buyer, but you're showing a property. Normally you would answer that phone and stop doing whatever you're doing. That's probably more important than that. But if you're showing a property, your client's right in front of you, and you're talking to them about this house, you're walking through it, are you going to answer the phone? No. Right? Would anybody answer the phone? Most people would not. Right? Because it's rude. You're showing them a house, and now you're just jabbering on the phone. Actually, my dad does that, and I'm like, but my point is, is why is it okay to not answer that call when we're showing a property, yeah, and, and that situation is still waiting for us at the end of the showing, an hour later, we're right there ready to take care of it. Why is it okay to ignore the call then, but not okay to ignore it during other activities, like your call sessions, or when you're making videos, or whatever you're doing, you're letting these distractions come in and it's still in your freedom, and you're not able to go play pick and ball, right? Because you're gonna answer your, answer your phone in the middle of the match, because you're so worried. So it goes back to, remember, I, wanted, I want you all to remember what my motto is. What's my motto? That I don't care. Remember? It's actually something else, right? I can't say that. That'll give something. That's my motto. All growing up. 
I think Ricky does a hat. I don't know if he you guys that I my boob is fully fucking on the stove. No, not at all. I I would just look at it and not answer. I don't have to be in the shrub this oh, okay. Well he does that, but it doesn't work because I call him twice. You found the hat. Straight the voice of my like call me again. It knows how to pierce the veal. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I told him yesterday, I was like, every time I call you, it goes straight to voicemail. I call you again and it rings. What is the deal? Now, now I need a Ricky the end. It's like, <laughs> yeah. If you guys want to see me create <laughs> and create client relationships, I make a live call tomorrow at the age of two o'clock. The. Yeah. Okay, so after interviewing dozens of agents that make more than a million dollars a year, people making a million dollars in GCI to five million dollars in GCI, um, I've identified one secret solution. Okay, and everyone's looking for the secret sauce. What is the secret schedule? Um, the secret is not in the schedule itself, it's in the priorities of the agent. And to make it very simple, top producers prioritize income producing activities. So it doesn't matter if you prospect all the way at nighttime, doesn't prospect, it doesn't matter if you prospect in the morning, as long as you're prioritizing on building relationships, nurturing relationships, and converting relationships, that's the secret sauce. The ideal schedule that I found a lot of millionaire top agents actually follow is they wake up very early, usually five or 6 a.m. From five to six, maybe six to eight, they focus on themselves. They work out, they meditate, affirmations, journaling, reviewing the goals, whatever it may be. Once eight o'clock hits, that's when they start planning their day. That's when they go out of their way to really get everything together. That's when they review their entire schedules. It's really just an hour of prepping for game time. 9 a.m. hits from 9 to 11, they are all prospecting. They are all building relationships. And there's so many ways to prospect nowadays. You don't have to go door knocking anymore. You could prospect through Instagram. You could prospect through LinkedIn. There's just so many new forms of building relationships. At 11 to 12, they focus on following up with those relationships, actually nurturing the ones that are ready to buy or sell now. And they have systems in place on the back end to nurture the cold ones. 12 to 1, they have lunch. 1 to 2, they're servicing clients, offer submission, writing up contracts, calling vendors, whatever it may be. And then from 2 to 6, they focus on anything that involves them getting into a car, going into a showing, inspections, consultations, things that actually make you money. And then six to nine, it's usually personal. So that is the ideal schedule. Not everyone has that. People have kids, people are married, people have different obligations, people work part-time jobs. So the number one advice I would give is prioritizing or producing activities, regardless of where they're at in the schedule. Oh, so you have anything in black CBIs? Hey, I'm Jennifer from Orlando, Florida. Hi, everyone. Um, my question for Ricky, you said that you give exceptional service. Yeah. What do you do? You're currently done average B. Yeah. If you do in, what does Ricky do at standard from the average D? And because he said that he gives extension to send us. Answer my phone. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, 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 no. It's, it's like, listen, no, no, not at all. Right? Not at all. You don't have to complicate the process. Treat them like they're your mom. Now, let me ask you this. How many people would treat their mom differently in a transaction? Y'all are so lying. Y'all are so lying. Y'all are just, we, we can't even be honest with each other. A lot of you guys, right? And I just want you to think about it, not to call you out, but I want you to think about that for a second. If your mom said, I'm gonna sell my house, Right. And I could walk through that process, how you do once someone tells you they want to sell, how you treat them differently. There shouldn't be any difference. We don't have time to get into all that. But the way that you would treat her through that tra that transaction, put her up on a little bit more of a pedestal than the rest of your clients. Why aren't you doing that for all your clients? So think about how you can treat your mom or dad if they were doing a deal and, and give and emulate that same service for all your clients. Put them all on the same pedestal so you think about the difference and what the transaction looks like for you on the service end if it's your mom versus a one of your other clients and then that it will, within there well you'll find the answer hey you listen thanks mom did my goodness is too bomb here no <laughs> <laughs> It's really like the wall and why didn't you leave me out there to see where I didn't hear it. What's this? Okay. I do what I said. Hey, bad. I see you so many times I have an angry used to the now game logic at Providence. Like used to this too and also Stabon. How do you really then we're at big like it's to get out of the police to the best and you got any of that 
What do I have to remember? Um, and the soulmate, some and the big. I don't have to remember any of that. No. Like, give me an example of something that I would need to remember to give somebody great service. Da, na, 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 na. What's that? Well, if it happened recently, I'm going to remember that. If it happened five years ago, then they probably don't want me to talk about it. Right? I don't have to remember it five years later. I don't. I don't. I just, if it happened recently, I'm going to remember it. If it's something that's happened recently, like, I'll remember that. Like, this is the person, their mother died. Like, how, you know, are you doing okay with that? That's easy to remember if somebody's mother died. Um, but if it happened five years ago, I don't need to remember it anymore because they do not want me to bring it. They probably don't want me to bring it up. If you can give me an example that makes sense, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just, I want, I want to know. I'm not like, I, if you can come up with something and this is, this is the carbuckle because you're sitting there and you can't think of anything. And so what I'm saying is, is can we simplify the process and not worry about the stuff that doesn't matter? And it opens you up to build massive business. And that's why my business is so large because I don't worry about the stuff that doesn't matter. You think their mother dying matters. You need to remember forever. No, you don't. You have to give up some things in order to gain other things. If I have to erase my, my memory, if I have to open up memory in my mind uh, to, in order to gain more clients and I have, I have to kick out the fact that this client's mother died five years ago, then so be it. See what I mean? You have limited storage. Right. right. And yes, like, and the way is to solve it. Right, but, and it's not increasing your business at all. Bingo. Thanks, Dad. Anything? What up? I order a cash to the store at Big Zero. Well, here we are. I'm so well. How? Ping racking up what you were positioned. If your client is saying how the Wazi is treated, so I don't like one client that I need to inform so then to know I'm heading to go to the evening, stopping to head or seat, please do this one. And you know, if I was still at age and I was like, oh, I'm going to a baby shower to her birthday anniversary or whatever you get from me. You did that, you got Like, honestly, you know, this is changing that I did. And they care, I didn't care about it too, but the air listening to them was more important than it being read on the first two pages. And then, yep, see. Right. And then, but then I'll, it was still so like, it's, yeah. Like any way, we'll let what we have on us. Eric, for great if you have, but no, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for your service. service. Did you, you say you're in the military? military? Uh, I'm not right. Got you. I, think we can, I can touch base on that. Yeah, yeah. So, the other thing is, I think it's just kind of changing perspective. It's very important if you remember those things. Like, I would consider that and be like, wow, it's really kind of her for, for remembering those dates. Um, however, um, I think it's more about them remembering you and that's where personal brand comes into play. Um, if you can build your personal brand in a way where you're on social media, you're posting on stories, you're running ads, retargeting pixels, and you're doing this in a way where they're actually seeing you all the time, um, in your mind, you're building credibility with them without even speaking to them. So, um, I think brand, uh, combined with leverage is one of the best ways to nurture relationships without you feeling like you have to actually physically speak to them and do it on that matter. Because his brand is that it's just feel like you. Yeah. Yeah. Even without talking to them, like yeah. I walk around the town and people are like, oh my God, they, they think they know me. Yeah. yeah. They see my picture, they see my post, they, you know, but it's, it's different. You don't have to, uh, fo when you're focusing on one person, you're visiting the hundreds. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. kind of the lesson here. Is yeah. Like, just put the lens out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Trust. Like those little, this look, and then did a nice, right? And when you were selling me, when you start entering this kind of the dance, and um, this such should have sort of been deep. What and what are you trying to show us to have? 
videos? Video videos. What's all these things? Um, how to uh, do great listing presentations. Um, here's my phone script. Um, I'm making videos for real estate agents. Mm -hmm. I didn't do any social media. I don't do any social media. I'm not going to do any social media for my real estate business. Everybody here should. Don't let me take it away. But can I, can I just change your perspective for just one little second, just to open your mind up? Please go do videos to build your real estate business. But social media is such a global opportunity. Why am I going to spend my social media, my precious social media minutes that are very limited and my life will live so long on local? I'm going to build a global brand. That's why in 2017, when I was like, I'm done prospecting, I could sell 100 properties a year just doing a weekly email and I have all this time on my hands. Let me go, go become the first completely free real estate coach in the, in the world and build a global brand with social media. I never use social media to build my real estate business. Listen, when I do social media for real estate, I'm hoping I get into a conversation with someone. I can just get that information for a penny and just call low. So I hacked the system. Let, I believe in social media to the core. It's the reason why I don't have to sell real estate anymore. It's the greatest thing ever. But for real estate agents, I, I have no use for it in the real estate world because I can only have so many conversations in a day. And if I could just get the information, just have the conversations, how can I increase, how can I scale anymore? Which brings me to my next point. Being a real estate agent, if you believe being a real estate agent is like being in a rat race, raise your hand. Every time you sell something, you have to go do it again and again and again. There's no residual financial gain that comes from a real estate transaction. So there's a lot of people that are real estate agents to the day they die and they grind their face off. I didn't want to do that. I saw people die, literally die making for sell by owner calls. They, they worked and they die from old age and they, they three days before they died, they knew they were dying and they made calls till three days before they died because they wanted to make as much money as they could to leave their wife. And they were in their 70s or 80s or whatever. And I said, I'm not going to do that. So think about that with social media. It's a global opportunity to build a brand and to really, hopefully, use social media to get out of real estate at some point, like I did. I don't even know what the question was. This time. <laughs> but, but, oh, how do, what videos do I make? Um, the, 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 all, all I can say. Of some volume. So, the one percent of the database that we need to affect you, what's your fitting ways to basically back all that to where your transaction, like, if you're like, I have to do your transaction, you're going to let a bank call outside of that. Not that it might be an ungood, plain good, because if you do this, you just, what's your fitting ways to act for all those, you know, the city where you and the other you know, is a hot ass. What are you talking about? Where do you get lead sources? Lead sources. Who do you call? If you're trying to add people to your database, go to redxdiscount.com, R-E-D-X discount.com, get Geo Leads Plus, Expireds Plus, go back 10 years worth of expireds, ex uh, withdrawals and canceled. Call them and say, hey, I thought you were trying to sell this house. What happened? Get into a conversation, get to know them, see what you can do to help them today. Look up with Geo Leads, subdivisions you want to sell properties in, call the property owners, Build your name. Get out there. It's right there. You can get information for a penny. Instead of spending $200, you, you know, agents bought 200 million leads in 2021 and there were 6 million transactions. What are y'all doing? I think it's been amazing. I think it's really cool when you also say, like, big figure, volume, and just stuck with that. Right? I can touch base on that too. You guys want my scrubs? Good. Text me at this number. Ready? And 251-312-8844. 251-312-8844. And connect with me on Instagram, too. I answer all my DLs. Oh, I got the mic. <laughs> oh. uh, so... Uh, gentleman in the back, what was your name? 
Jordan, so just to give you a little background in terms of what you're describing, you're describing the lead source. Where do you get the names, phone numbers, and contacts of all these people? We've narrowed it down to five. Number one is what we could just mention, which is local homeowners, which Red X is a great tool to go out there and get their information. Number two is local business owners. Business owners spend around 10, 20 years of their lives building local relationships with the community already. If you're able to tap into these one of these relationships at mass, they'll introduce you to another 300 people. Third thing comes down to online lead sources, Google My Business, Realtor.com, Zillow, Yelp, all your reputation profiles, IDX website, that's gonna be the third one. The fourth one is going to be social media at mass. I'm talking outreach in the form of Instagram. You could type in hashtag local restaurants in your local city, and you'll get all of these people that are actually there in the form of actual like context. The next one, you have Facebook community groups, type in the name of your city into a community group, and you could literally just go out there and start building relations with people on that sense. And then the fifth one is gonna be more networking based. Everyone here is an agent, and every agent here gives each other referrals throughout the year, yet no one bothers to prospect's agent. My biggest referral source, 40 to 50% of all my business is nationwide agents sending me business in Orlando and New York. So those are the five sources. If you want my scripts and my systems, goldbartraining.com. I'm gonna have to rewind that and listen to it all like half speed or something. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me the four minute cue, so I blame it on Tatiana. <laughs> I'm gonna add test more because if you want my slides and my cop five stuff and all of that, I do have it all in the link in Dropbox. So just send me a men's and non workplace and I'll be happy to share that. And I know I'm not paying you. Vicky Fine, I'll fix it. One more question. Omar. Uh, yeah, the outreach work was uh, right. I really saw what the threads on the, the podcast with uh, and it was a good to go uh, share uh, mine with somebody that's the uh, the about how I'm just was one of the and us. Uh, question, I don't know if we got a touch side. Uh, is regarding what's your mindset about enabling your time uh, uh, the frequency of following up with clients, especially if it, it as you have as I don't know, if we can like hear for a little conversation or it can be uh, a moment and all this for the for the sake of time and he's got one more question, but but the, for the sake of time it, it depends on why they want to buy or sell. I don't know what the what to do next unless I know why they want to buy or sell. And some of them, if you understand that, you'll understand, hey, I can just send the weekly email, they can call me when they want to do something. I don't have to follow up with every person to that level. It depends on what their motivation is. Yes, sir. If you use uh, old school postcards for prospecting, farming, or uh, I did. I, I used to spend 5000 a month on that. Um, and it, it, it was okay, but I was like, I'm getting all my business from my, from my email, so I'm going to cut this sixty grand a year out. Uh, there's a guy, the number one Remax agent of the world, Jordan Cohen. Um, he, that's all he does is direct mail. He's the number one Remax agent in the world. So it works. I would, I would say the biggest tip there is to spend money and make it really amazing. Not just the cheap little, you know, I'll say I do use the, uh, recipe postcards with a company that sent them out every single month at a very minimum, I'll use these find some sort of direct, I don't know, list her can so opposite. That goes out of the yeah. one academy. Because a white doll said recipe, who's like so he is. So you're saying a pop of mind, and yeah. I have clients yeah. coming for you. Right. I put, you know, all of those recipes, and they think yeah. out of the month have enough with them, mm -hmm. and I'm not. Like, so yeah, death, I want to be able to chill. I'm a big business. business. I don't want to have to work hard. I'm with Bala. If you've done business with them or they sent you a referral, you could go ahead and invest yeah. in them in some uh, physical form of direct mail. If it's cold leads as far as direct mail, I mean they don't do it unless you have five to ten thousand dollar budget over an extended period of six time, uh, six months. So if you don't have 50 to 60K to actually wait for the actual ROI, don't even do it. Direct mail is very hard to track. So you, and once again, it's a very long term of investment. Follow me on Instagram and YouTube and um, all the other social platforms out there. We appreciate it, everybody. We had a great time. We hope you got a lot of value. And, 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 and you came, y'all came here for something and I hope you got it. So nice We're out of here.